Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, hope you're doing well, and it is time for another edition of Let's Argue, where I go online, I accept your hot takes, unpopular opinions, tough questions. In this episode, I asked you guys a specific question, and that was, what is the worst album of the decade? Basically, the answer to our best album of the decade, Let's Argue video which we will link you to at the end of this video, so you can check that out, of course. So, worst LP of the decade, what do you think it is? Let's go! Culture 2, Migos. After a great album in Culture, they sold out and made one of the most bloated, forgettable albums of all time, let alone the decade. I don't entirely disagree. Migos Culture 2 is a pretty bloated, terrible, just why the hell did you do this to me album? Why did you do this? Why did you ruin your creative streak? It's not really outwardly awful enough to truly be the worst album of the decade though. It's just really mind numbing and repetitive and it's like painfully obvious that not a lot of effort went into it. Though I don't personally think it's the worst album of the decade. It could certainly take away a prize for the most half-assed record of the decade. Not worst in quality necessarily, but Weezer's Teal album is the most creatively bankrupt thing I've ever heard. Well, it is a covers album, and by virtue of that, there is going to be a bit less creativity in the mix because you're not actually creating the songs at hand. That being said, there are wildly ambitious covers records, sure, but clearly that's not really the, uh, the approach that Weezer took. And as long as we're talking about creatively bankrupt records, in this video. I don't know, is it more creatively bankrupt than Migos Culture 2? Because I'm thinking of that because we were just on it. No, I'm pretty sure Weezer put more thought and more effort into these covers than the Migos did on any of the songs on that record. <laughs> I feel like we also have to note that Weezer put out albums of originals that were far worse than this, this covers album, so there is that. Memories do not open by the chain smokers. Absolute dumpster fire responsible for opening the can of worms that defined the terrible charting radio music of the latter half of this decade. Most likely you're right about the radio music thing, and I know I didn't like this record, and I know I gave it a not good, but I feel like I personally have a difficult time naming it the worst record of the decade because... As much as I'm struggling right now, I cannot remember a single fucking note or song from this thing. I, I am <laughs> trying really hard, and I can't recall anything from it. So maybe in a way, nothing about it was terrible enough to even remember, which is its own kind of awful, for sure. That something be so devoid of anything worth noting that um, it's it's almost like you're stuck in some sort of musical purgatory. No doubt, bad album, but at least in my view, the worst thing about it is that uh, there's very little about it that's actually defining or distinct or able to be recalled. Jaden has released two of the worst albums of the decade, Sire and Iris. They aren't inherently terrible on their own, but they're rather cheap mockeries of artists, Kanye and Travis, who execute the style Jaden bites much better. If you're going to copycat, at least do it well. You also forgot about the mixtape that he put out where he rips off a bunch of Brockhampton ideas too, but uh, who's counting? Yeah, I mean, if you were going to point at an artist who was way over budget, and uh, way under original, way lacking on original ideas and everything that he was pulling on on his records clearly came from one of his contemporaries for the most part. Uh, yeah, that would be Jaden. Do want to say though, he's a young guy still in the early part of his music career. Uh, most artists do kind of kick things off, ripping off their favorites, ripping off their contemporaries. And uh, look, he's doing what I think most kids his age would do if they had uh, so much money they didn't know what to do with it and uh, just wanted to start a music career, so. Uh. Up until this year, it was angelic to the core, but I think Nostalgia Critics' The Wall usurped it. Whatever you can say about the dozens of terrible albums of the decade, at least they all came from a place of appreciation for the medium. Conversely, I feel like Doug Walker just hates music. Really excellent, excellent point here, excellent tweet, I love this argument, 
and it makes me think about what I want to be my worst album of the decade. If I had both of these albums to choose from, because if I had to pick one of these records, I would have to pick each of them for very different reasons. With Angelic to the Core, my placement of it as worst album would almost be an act of praise, because the record is such a spectacular failure on so many fronts, and it's like it comes from this genuine place of delusion. It's like I'm transported into the mind of Corey Feldman, and as bad as it is, I feel like I'm, I'm still moving through some sort of experience. I am seeing the world through the eyes of Corey, and as terrible as some parts of this album are, Corey, uh, you know, it's, I, I think he's working from a place of love. On the flip side, with Doug Walker's The Wall, uh, for sure it's a failure on all fronts. For sure it's unlikable, it's disrespectful, it is hateful, its critiques of The Wall are just shit and annoying and stupid, but I feel like this is almost the lazy way to get worst album of the decade, you know what I mean? I could make the worst album of the decade if I recreated every instrumental from Radiohead's OK Computer and then just like did fart noises over it for the duration of the entire record. And my recreations of the instrumental were like bad, maybe I did them through a MIDI program or something, but now that I think about that concept, even that would be more interesting than Doug Walker's The Wall, <laughs> so maybe it is the worst album. The worst album is Ed Sheeran's Divide. There lacks any creativity within it, with awful production and songwriting throughout. As an Irishman, the songs Galway Girl and Nancy Mulligan come off as stereotypical and racist, as Sheeran portrays Ireland as being in the Dark Ages. Can't say I agree with this being the worst album of the decade, but if we were to pick a singing-songwriting fail son of this decade, it would have to be Ed Sheeran. His music is so mediocre, it's so boring, it's so bland, it's so lowest common denominator. And I feel like despite his popularity, we almost all have an acknowledgement of that. I mean, his participation in that weird Yesterday movie, I didn't know how much he was in that movie before I actually saw it, which I did see it recently. And it's, it's pretty hilarious how there are various points of the film where it's readily acknowledged that his songs just like, suck so hard in comparison to these Beatles songs. It's like he's happy to participate in this narrative that he is a representation of songwriting and musical artistry just having gone downhill since the age of John, Paul, George, and Ringo. So if you're a platinum selling artist and yet you're happy to work within this uh, framework of taste where uh, all your stuff just sucks in comparison to the classics and there's no way it can hold a candle to any of it because it's just not good. Um, I don't know. I mean, you can't really argue with that. I mean, I feel like Ed is making the argument for me. Ginger, a complete disappointment with mostly average or bad songs, and seeing as Brockhampton are calling this their best album ever, it really shows what direction they're heading in musically, and it's going to be less than average pop. Is it really that bad? On top of it, uh, I don't really know if this record is indicative of a new direction for Brockhampton. Kind of seemed like to me a sad little detour in reflection to everything that had happened to the band over the past year. As I said in my review, I don't think they're going to continue to just make sad, weepy pop and R&B music for the next four or five records, if we do even have four or five more records. And while I get Ginger is not for everybody, I get disappointment with Ginger, I get that some people are not going to find it as exciting as Saturation or Iridescence, hell. I don't even find it as exciting as Saturation, even though I like it. But I feel like your argument here is a lot less based around what makes this album bad in isolation and just what, according to you, makes it not all that great in comparison with its preceding works in the Brockhampton discography. Not that strong of an argument for worst album of the year. Okay. The Big Day by Chance the Rapper. A total mess, creatively and literally. The features are average at best, the worst lyricism I've ever heard, awful beats, and ugly singing make this a 77 minute embarrassment to who used to be one of hip hop's most loved artists. Complete disaster. <laughs> God, you're so mean. You're so mean about it. I mean, I, I was not all that positive in my review of this album either, so I, I can't really talk, but um, that was cold. You, you fucking iced this record. And uh, look, look, Chance is just trying to live and love his wife, guys, okay? Don't be mean to Chance the Rapper. Yeah, it's a bloated, 
uh, terrible record where Chance easily writes his worst lyrics, where he pulls on some really weird influences that that generally are, are not bad, some R&B, some pop, some hip house, a bunch of other things, but he just... He does all of it not all that well. And the singing is god-awful. I mean, I, I, I don't entirely disagree with what you're saying here. Um, it's, it's just brutal and probably uh, uh, just uh, m more, more uh, aggressively than, than I would have put it. Testing from ASAP Rocky. It's pretty complicated to hear this album with each track ranging from okay, enjoyable, to extremely lousy. In a way, I do admire this record for being ambitious and ASAP Rocky trying to just get out of his comfort zone, take some risks, do some different stuff, even if he's obviously leaning pretty hard toward a, a more poppy, accessible experience, I guess. But, um, yeah. There's there's a lot of attempts on this record that just do not uh, pan out. And that Moby that Moby song, I can't remember the title of that song. That song with that damn Moby sample is terrible. The record isn't a completely miserable failure though. And I mean, look, there there are some records dropping right now that, in comparison, testing is a lot more creative than, so can't say it's the worst record of the decade for me. Speeding Bullet to Heaven. It was such a drastic drop in quality from what we knew Cuddy was capable of. While there were more objectively bad albums, the fact that he had the potential to do so much more made this record the worst to me. You know, that's pretty funny. Because as, I guess, controversial and as uh, viral as my very negative review of Speeding Bullet to Heaven was, and I listened to it not too long ago, for whatever reason I did, I can't remember why I was refreshing my memory on the album, but still. Uh, I, I still don't care for it. I still think it's a ridiculous album. But um, there actually are worse albums that came out this decade. So if there's something I can say now, definitively, before I make my worst record of the decade list, Kid Cudi's Speeding Bullet to Heaven definitively is not the worst album of the decade. I don't even know if it's in the top three. I don't even know if it's in the top three, and that's, and that's saying something. There's been some bad music this decade, god damn. This is an unpopular, but total Xanarchy is the worst thing to happen to music since Eminem grew a beard. God, it was. Whatever you want to call this current movement, style, mumble rap. I personally don't like that term because it seems a bit too pejorative. Uh, even though I personally like a lot of rappers who are thrown under the bus with that term. And there are things that are often labeled mumble rap that I wouldn't necessarily agree are mumble rap. I don't even know what the fuck the parameters of mumble rap are. But I feel like if you had to pick a record that distilled all the terrible qualities of mumble rap, if you had to pick an album that this must be what all mumble rap records sound like to old heads, uh, it would be Lil Xan's Total Xanarchy. We beefin' by Wendy's. Worst possible case of a brand trying to make money off popular trends. There might be worse music than this, but We Beefin' represents everything that was wrong with music and really the world over the past 10 years. I don't know if I could say it's a representation of everything wrong with music over the past 10 years. Certainly it is a reflection of uh, music marketing and commercialism and branding in music just are really running amok. Uh, what I will say that I'm happy about is that um, the amount of brands and other corporations that basically tried to recreate this, oh, we're gonna, like, oh, we're gonna drop a mixtape and we're not an artist, we're, instead we're, we're Walmart or we're uh, Shake Shack or we're five guys. Yeah, thankfully that has not really been too much of a thing. I'm glad that that has not caught on that, uh, that virally. I'm glad every year I don't have to review a McDonald's or a fucking Disney mixtape or something. And I pray that that continues to not be a thing. John Frusciante's PBX Funicular Intaglio Zone. Such a fall off from his other brilliant works that it makes this album so disappointing. That's funny someone says that and someone feels that way and someone even remembered that record enough to name it their worst album of the decade or even a major disappointment. But um, my connection to this record and my feelings on this record are mostly based around just what happened when I reviewed it. Uh, originally, way back in the earliest days of the channel. And uh, I remember the John Frusciante fans were just 
fucking hammering me and just like wanted me dead. It was not pretty and at the time it felt like uh, it was it was like the most intense thing to me. People are just like so mad that I don't like this record. I'm so glad that I exist in a place now personally and emotionally where um, <laughs> that sort of thing doesn't bother me. I've transcended into a zen-like state where I don't give a fuck how much you hate my opinion. <laughs> And I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Those have been your picks, your opinions of worst album of the decade. I argued with them, or I didn't argue with some of them. Some of them I agree, I agreed with. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Mwah. Love you. Forever.